Hi, this is Tim, and welcome to Talks with Tim. And today we're going to do a question and answer session. And I was going to do all liker questions, but I can't believe how many of you asked for more hater questions. So I'm going to do five liker questions and five hater questions a day. So we'll start with the liker questions and we'll end with the hater questions. So Justin says, a few ideas how to break down complex control systems to resolve problems. Do an interview with an AB sales rep, a plant manager, or an engineer about new tech. Ask for ladder projects that have been done with control trainers and show how they could be simplified or enhanced. So actually, Justin, he gets, he gets several questions in there, so I guess this is more than 10 questions. But first, how to break down complex control systems to resolve problems. That is a really needed task, but I gotta tell you, I, I think that's one that we all struggle with online. We can do it great in the PLC lab because we can simulate problems and you get your hands around them, but I have not come up with how to do that one online. But trust me, it is in the dream stage. Now, as far as talking to sales reps, plant managers, or engineers about new tech, you know, there's a lot of people out there already doing that. The first one that comes to mind would be Chris Lukey on Manufacturing Happy Hour, and I'll put a link to his down in the description. He talks about all types of new things coming to our industry. And then, yeah, ask for ladder logic projects that have been done and show how they can be simplified or enhanced. I'm going to do that and I may ask for some of yours. If you want to email me one, then um, go ahead. But I'm actually going to start by nitpicking some of my old projects. Like I'm going to go back to some of my original ones and talk about them and talk about how I would do things differently today. I may even pick apart some of my newer ones and just say, well, hey, looking back, we could have done this better or this better. Because I think we can always look back at our programs and find something that we can improve. So yeah, those, those are some good tips there, Justin. Our next one comes from David who asks, would it be feasible to run three five horsepower motors off of one 10 horsepower BFD by building a control panel with a simple plug so that I could plug in the one that I'm using at the current moment? Well, honestly, that would be feasible, but you know, you're always going to end up needing two of them. And honestly, it reminds me of an episode of Green Acres. So let's just go ahead and hit play on this episode. The whole thing is based on the principle of seven. That's the maximum load the generator can carry. Now, the bigger electrical appliances, they have the biggest numbers, as I've indicated on the chart here. Uh, the can opener is one. Coffee pot, electric iron, toaster mixer, that's two. Rag pan, three. Rotisserie, four. Dishwasher, five. Washing machine, freezer, and refrigerator. And they draw the most electricity. You see, so there's six. You understand? You don't understand. I'll put a link to the rest of that video in the description, but I think you get the point. Really, if you have 15 horsepower worth of load, that you need to run, then you need to get a 30 horsepower rotary phase converter. You're just gonna be so much happier. I know it's a little more investment up front, but you'll be a lot happier. And I'll put a link in the description to the whole rotary phase converter video where you can learn more about what David is talking about. All right, well, actually we have another David question here. Tim, I'm not sure if you had answered this before, but it would be nice to know about your school experience and exactly what did you learn that transitioned into controls? Well, I try to be really polite when it comes to schools because we work with a lot of schools now and I think they're doing a great job these days, but when it comes to my school career, unfortunately it was absolutely nothing. But they're getting better, so we'll leave that one at that. Our next question is from Jordan. This is not about automation, but I've been looking for a video on making doors for control panels. Well, first, yeah, that is, that's definitely about automation. I just put everything in a grid, but almost never see it done that way. I'd like to know some general rules for laying out switches, HMIs, disconnects, etc. I'd like to know the different techniques of running wire to all the door mounted items. What wires to group together? 
Or do I need more than one set of wires running to the door? Do I just zip and stick all the wires down between every switch or zip tie it? And any more guidance you can think of on the subject. You know, this is really interesting. We do have a few about wiring doors, also about lining up disconnects through doors, but we don't have one about layouts. And that may happen with this HMI series we're doing because we've had several people ask about layouts of HMIs and external buttons that may be associated with them. And also, it's really fascinating the people that get connecting wires to doors wrong because it's a little shocking what you actually can and can't do to make your wires look really neat on a door. And so, yeah, we probably will tackle that. Probably the one that will, will say, upset a lot of people is you cannot take typical sticky tape and put wire duck on the door. It makes for a really beautiful installation, but there are issues with it on UL. So we're gonna hit, a, we may hit a couple of days. Let me, let me think on that one. Let's see, our next one comes from Robert. Tim, I disagree with you not going live. Would you please reconsider it? You know, I get this comment by quite a few people and I don't know, I mean, what am I really adding by going live? You know, and there's a few issues. There's one, the first one's gonna shock everybody out there is I'm actually camera shy. Like I've gone live one time and it was really, really awkward. I mean, when we're doing it this way, I can, I don't know, I feel like I'm just talking to a mirror or something because that's all I see is my reflection. I don't know, but really my big obstacle to that is okay, today I have a Compact Logics PLC right behind me. So if somebody was to happen to ask me a question about Compact Logics, how to do something, I can turn around and we can probably take care of that. But if you were to ask a question about an HMI, then I'd have to go over there and I'd have to grab some hardware. There's, you know, there is actually a lot of setup that goes into making videos. So I, I struggle a little bit with what exactly we would hope to address in a live stream. Now, I guess I could do like this, this particular podcast. Uh, it could have been a live stream. So I don't know, guys. Let's have a little discussion in the comments on that. What, what is the pro of being a live stream? Would you really, I mean, mate, do I like once a month? Would it help be helpful? Let me know in the comments on that. But okay, that's the end of the constructive questions for this week. Uh, now we're gonna go to our hater questions. So this one comes from our sub panel video. Okay, so on one side you have 120, on the other side you have 120, together you have 220. Something screwy with your math here, because I get 240. I think I'll go find another video. Well, oh my goodness. That's revolutionary. I think that he may have came up with the mathematical formula that's gonna allow us to contain magic smoke and put it back into components. But honestly, when we're saying this stuff on these videos, really the numbers are coming off my head and sometimes I just say the wrong thing. Like I may let it fly out that I think you're a jerk for posting that. But really, maybe I meant that I think you're joking when you post that. But in the United States, some people may even say that you have a hundred volt. And I've seen panels labeled a hundred volt. That's a little bit on the low side but you'll see them that are labeled with 110, labeled with 115, labeled with 120, and I've even seen them labeled with 130. And yes, when you have single phase power and you're going between L1 and L2, it does combine them typically with respect to neutral. So it should double to either 220 or 230 or 240. But really, if that's enough to make you go to another video, good riddance, go bug somebody else. Next, we have awesome video. Set the part where you're prodding around in a panel without electrical safety precautions. And there's 480 supply to the transformer. Pretty sure that violates OSHA 1910-137. Well, no, it's not. 1910-137, 
is specifications about PPE. It has nothing to do with when or where you're gonna wear it. So if you're gonna call me out in a video about doing something wrong, at least cite the right code for everybody. Also, make sure that you're calling out the right thing because no, there wasn't a 480 supply going to that panel. It was a 120 supply going to that panel. We're back feeding a transformer. Now in the end, that's just as dangerous, but gosh, if you're gonna get technical with all this code citing, get it right. Why does every F hashtag hashtag K-I-N-G tutorial use the hashtag T 444MS instead of the addressing the timer properly. And he's screaming at me with this. Addressing the timer is not easy and many people need to change that timer in the HMI. I have been through six bloody tutorials and every single one uses the hashtag T444MS timer. Please, please, please do this properly. And he's still screaming at me. Now I got a couple questions here. What is the double hashtag about? Am I just not up to date in HIPAA? What is F hashtag hashtag K-I-N-G? I don't know what that means. I do know what the hashtag T444MS is. Now actually he's got this wrong too. Again, if you're gonna call me out, get it right. It is T hashtag 444MS, which would be a 444 millisecond timer. Now, here's the thing about this guy is two things, actually. This doesn't give me incentive to make a video about how to do this. Also, the comment right before his told exactly how to do this. So, it, I mean, if you get to the comments and you think you have something relevant to say, read the rest of the comments. It may have already been answered. So yeah, actually this was an upcoming video, but I did kick it back a little bit just because this guy's being a jerk. But yeah, we do need to adjust timers on HMIs, but this is not how you get me to do a video. This just goes to show how controlling the world is. We could have all the free electricity with Nikola Tesla's notes. Power lines shouldn't even have existed. Great video. Oh my goodness. This is not what this video is about. This actually, this video is one I did with my kids on producing electricity using a magnet and a coal of copper wire, like you would get out of a contactor coal, which is exactly how power generation works in any turbine. It's not secret notes that were destroyed when Nikola Tesla died. This is really how electricity is generated. Also, the power lines are Nikola Tesla's responsibility. He is the reason we have the power lines everywhere. Now, I think Nikola Tesla was a flat out genius. And yeah, I do think Edison was not that genius. But Thomas Edison wanted to have DC power generation, which would have required power stations very close to where the electricity was being consumed. Tesla wanted AC, which allowed us to distribute power at much greater distances. And that's why we see the ginormous power lines that we do today. But somehow YouTube has gotten me into the suggested feeds of a lot of these conspiracy things. Like I, I did the one about free electricity, which was really about how an earth battery works. And then I did the one on the cell phone chargers that they weren't dangerous. And lately, yeah, I'm getting all these comments saying, thank you for trying to break these conspiracies that are holding our electricity back. Well, no, I'm, I'm really just trying to teach you about the electricity we use today and the automation that we use today. I'm not trying to crack anything new here. And the final one, I respectfully disagree with you comparing augmented reality in our industry to Disneyland. Industrial automation is serious business. Well, let me tell you something, Avengers Endgame was made by Disney. And if you saw the look in Tony Stark's eyes when he snapped Thanos out of existence, that was serious business too. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, both the constructive questions and the hater questions and any comments or questions that you have, good or bad, feel free to put them down in the comments. 
hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Give us a rating, all those fun things. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.